Hey, Kawa Mai here. Today we're going to be replacing the belt from this Panasonic RQ SX59. Alright, so first thing you want to do is remove the screws. They are located right there. You can see the arrows pointing to them. And uh, that's what the screws look like. When you're removing them, remember to keep uh, their order in place because they might vary in length. So once the screws are removed, you can begin prying the case open. However, this corner here is actually clipped uh, together. So you can see that I just took a flathead screwdriver, unclipped it, and now I'm lifting the case open, uh, exposing the board. There you go. Uh, something you can't see is the belt because the belt is actually underneath the board. So that means we need to do some uh, desoldering to remove the board. And uh, there's also screws around the board holding it in place. So as you can see, I'm using my soldering iron, just warming up the joint and sucking up the solder with my desoldering tool. I have my soldering iron set to 290 degrees Celsius. Uh, you don't want to go too high in the temperature because that might ruin the board. And for obvious reason, you don't want it to be too low. See those clean joints right there? That was very nice. And uh, next to the battery terminal, I'm also desoldering that because it's holding the board in place. Notice I also have a screw next to the button I haven't removed. And uh, I noticed this while I was desoldering, so there, there I am removing the screw. Okay. Alright, so this part is optional. You don't need to do this, but right here I'm just removing the ribbon cable for the head. All right, so once that's removed, you see you can just lift the port just like that. Real easy. All right, all the mechanics are exposed now. As you can see, my belt may look fine, but it's actually slipping. So we gotta, we gotta remove the old belt. Um, so to do that, you gotta kind of take apart the motor a little. You see, I just took off that C-clip and the motor is just two magnets sandwiched together. So taking the top magnet there is prying it all. You see that motor, it's a little flimsy, I removed it and right now I'm just running my finger through it to feel if it's sticky or not. In my case, uh, it's not sticky at all, it's really smooth, so that means the pulleys are probably clean and they're not sticky at all. So take your new belt, route it in place. Uh, this part's kind of tricky. You see, I'm just routing it in place and if you don't know how to route the belt because you weren't paying attention before you removed the old belt. Uh, on the board, underneath the board, uh, there's a little picture to tell you how the belt is supposed to be routed. So since these are generic belts, uh, you might get a rough corner. In my case, there's a rough corner. Just having, uh, just have it facing uh, away from the spindle of the motor because that might cause some unwanted wild flutter. So that's why I did there. And time for the magnet to go back on. Just hover it over the bottom magnet until it aligns. You know it's aligned when you move the magnet and the top magnet is following. Uh, I meant the bottom magnet following the top magnet. And I just like to drop it back in place because uh, I feel like um, it makes the alignment better. You know, while it's falling in the air, it might adjust itself. Now if you have a bad connection, you might want to remove um, the uh, battery contact here and clean that pin with some rubbing alcohol because there might be some corrosion and in my case you can see there's some corrosion there, that dark spot. And uh, okay, so once you do that, time to put the board back in but before, before you do that, spray the volume knob with some contact cleaner, just rock it back and forth just like that. Okay, and now you can just put the board back in and we can start soldering everything back together. Uh, just screw the board back in place before you do solder though, just to hold everything tightly in place. Okay, so again, 290 degrees Celsius and heat up the pin and the pad at the same time and you know add solder once you do that. And 
if the solder is not flowing nicely onto the pad or the pin, it means you may have to add some uh, flux. Uh, normally solder has, uh, when you buy solder, there's some flux in the core already, uh, but if that burns away, uh, you just gotta add your own flux. Right? <laughs> That's all you gotta do. All right. Let me show you how to solder the ribbon cable back in if you desoldered it. So underneath the ribbon cable is kind of sticky because they use like some type of tape to hold it in place. So stuck it in place, solder one corner, use a screwdriver to push it down. And I did the same on the other side. As you can see right here, take my screwdriver, push it down, and then I let go. Now I can start soldering in between those two joints I made. As you can see, those joints are nice and shiny. If you're using lead free solder, uh, it's, it's not gonna be shiny, but whatever, it still works. Okay, what's next? Okay, speed calibration. I have my three kilohertz calibration tape. Opening up the lid, you can see that hinge just popped out because we, we uh, removed the screw that was holding it in place. I'm just sliding it back in. I have three kilohertz facing on side A. Plug it into my computer. You can see that software there. I'll have it linked in the description. You can download it. You just need a uh, some type of audio input on your computer and it should work. Right here, you can see it's not working. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out what's wrong. So, you know, I have line in selected. Okay, what can be wrong? Let's check Windows settings, huh? Set line in to default. Hmm, still not working. Apparently, I had it muted. I don't know why. You see, I unmute it, and there you go. That's what you're looking at. It tells you the speed on the top right. Right there. I don't know why I unplugged it, but there you go. I plugged it back in. Um, what was that? Plus 22. Normally for Sony and the newer Panasonics, um, they want you to calibrate as close to 3 kilohertz as possible, plus or minus 3 kilohertz. So that's like, that's that's the range you need to calibrate to. So you can see that the adjustment screw is next to the motor. And I'm just adjusting it to the correct speed. Now with side A, you want to correct it to maybe as close as 3 kilohertz as you can. So when you measure side B and it ends up being faster, let's say plus 30 hertz, uh, just take half of that and make that the difference of side A and B. So make side A, you know, plus 15 and then side B minus 15, you know, to get the speed in between. And uh, as you can see in the video, my wound floor is not good. So that means I need to rotate the belt because the side that the belt is hitting the motor is uh, kind of rough. You see, I'm just countering the speed. It's a, little, it's a little hard, actually. I don't know what I'm doing in the video, but there you go. Oh, okay. So this next part, look, I rotated the belt. So you can see the wound flare is acceptable now. It's below 0.5, which is very good. Anything below 0.5 is acceptable by me. Uh, now, of course, um, in the video I didn't show about uh, demagnetize the head and cleaned everything. But this is just a belt replacement uh, tutorial video. So once you finish that, just start putting everything back together. Flip the hold switch up because on the board there's a little notch that protects the switch from breaking. So flip it up and when you put back the case, make sure the hold switch is also up. Just hold it with your finger, align it, put everything back together, screw it in place, and there you go. You got yourself a repaired Panasonic RQ SX59 portable cassette player and uh, now you can just enjoy it for many years. All right, so thanks for watching. If the video helped, Give it a like. If you want to see more tips and uh, how-to videos like, like this, just uh, hit that subscribe button. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.